The protesters from Hifazat e Islam called it the siege of Dhaka. Volleys of gunfire echo across the city as police take on thousands of protesters in the early hours of the 6th of May. When it was over, police said they'd recovered 11 bodies, including one of their own. But Human Rights Watch says its independent sources suggest the number of people killed was at least 50. The answer over disputed figures may lie here. This is Dhaka's state-run cemetery where they bury unclaimed bodies. Abdul Jalil digs the graves. He's deaf and unable to speak, but determined to tell his story. He tells Al Jazeera he buried 14 bodies after the protest on May 6th, all at night. He points to his chin. They were all bearded men, he indicates, and they all had gunshot wounds. This previously unseen footage shows the chaos of gunfire and smoke on the 6th of May. Protesters clamber over walls to escape. On the steps of this building, those who could not get away. The injured lie among the dead. It's not always clear who's alive among the bodies. Protesters stream out to give themselves up. On the ground, there appear to be more bodies. Hundreds went into police custody like a surrendering army early that morning. Stragglers were rounded up, their ordeal clear on their faces. But Hifazati Islam says many of the protesters are still unaccounted for. Bangladesh's foreign minister denies the government is hiding a higher toll. The events of uh, 6th and 7th happened in front of uh, television cameras of at least 23 television channels and everyone in Bangladesh now has a mobile phone um, with cameras. Also there were uh, footage that that shows that there were people who were uh, lying down as if they were dead bodies and when the police nudged them uh, they got up and walked away. Human Rights Watch is asking questions of the protest organisers Hifazat e Islam over the descent into violence and why so many young people were drawn into the protests. The rights group wants an independent inquiry to find out what happened once and for all. Miriam Nahond, Al Jazeera.